Boeing just crossed one of its biggest hurdles in years. No ceremony, no celebration, just a quiet approval that could finally change everything. After years of delays, frozen timelines, and growing doubt, the FAA has cleared a critical system on Boeing's most troubled wide-body program. On paper, this brings the 777X1 step closer to flying passengers in 2026. For Boeing, it's the progress they've been waiting on for a long time. But here's the problem. While Boeing was stuck in certification limbo, airlines didn't stop planning. They didn't pause expansion. And they definitely didn't wait. Instead, they started making moves without Boeing. And some of those decisions may already be impossible to reverse. This approval might look like a breakthrough. But depending on how you look at it, it could also be a sign that Boeing is arriving late to a market that's already moving on. And what happened next reveals just how much the aviation landscape has shifted while Boeing was grounded. The approval itself was easy to miss. There was no rollout event, no delivery date announcement, and no aircraft rolling out of a hangar. But behind the scenes, it removed one of the largest roadblocks standing between the 7779 and airline service. The FAA cleared a major update to the aircraft's flight control software. A system regulators had been closely scrutinizing for years. During earlier certification reviews, concerns surfaced about how the aircraft's systems behaved in specific operating conditions. Those concerns were serious enough to stall large portions of testing altogether. This wasn't routine red tape. After the 737 MAX disasters, the FAA rewrote how it oversees new aircraft programs. Software and flight control systems are now treated as potential single points of failure, and every line of logic must behave in a predictable, transparent way. Until this update was approved, Boeing couldn't move forward in any meaningful way. According to regulatory summaries released in late 2025, the revised software was tested against much stricter safety standards designed to prevent unexpected system responses. With that clearance now in place, the FAA has effectively reopened the certification pathway. For the first time in years, the 7779 isn't stuck. But the delay that led to this moment had already left scars across the industry. And that's where the real consequences begin. The 777X was never supposed to take this long. When Boeing first launched the program, the aircraft was expected to enter service in the early 2020s. Airlines planned routes around it. Fleet strategies were built with it in mind. Then the delays started stacking up. One revision turned into another and timelines quietly slid further into the future. By the time the FAA tightened certification rules, after the MAX accidents, the program was already vulnerable. Every new review dug deeper into system behavior, software logic, and pilot interaction. What once would have been a minor adjustment became a multi-year reset. Flight testing slowed, certification milestones froze, and without FAA approval on core systems, Boeing couldn't validate large portions of the aircraft at all. Each pause rippled outward, affecting suppliers, production schedules, and airline confidence. By late 2025, first deliveries were no longer framed as expectations. They were framed as hopes. Boeing now targets 2026, assuming the remaining certification steps fall into place. The software approval makes that possible but it doesn't erase the years already lost. Because while the 777X was waiting for clearance, airlines were forced to make decisions they never wanted to make. And those decisions would change the market in ways Boeing didn't anticipate. For airlines, waiting wasn't an option. Every delay forced carriers to rethink fleet plans that were built around the 777-9's capacity and range. Aircraft scheduled for retirement had to stay in service longer. Leases were extended, maintenance costs climbed, and temporary solutions became permanent line items. Some airlines filled the gap with smaller wide bodies, even if the economics weren't ideal. 
others reshuffled routes entirely, prioritizing flexibility over capacity. All of it added cost, and all of it happened while the 777X remained uncertified. That's why this software approval matters so much. For the first time, airlines can move from contingency planning to actual preparation. Crew training timelines can be outlined. Maintenance programs can be finalized. Route networks can finally be modeled around a real delivery window. But there's a catch. Not every airline is still waiting. Years of uncertainty pushed some customers to lock in alternatives. And once those decisions are made, they don't easily unwind. And that's where Boeing's competitive position starts to look far more fragile than a single approval suggests. Airbus didn't need to beat the 777X. It just needed to be available. While Boeing worked through certification pauses, Airbus continued delivering wide-body aircraft that airlines could actually put into service. The A350 family didn't perfectly match the 777-9's size, but for many carriers, certainty mattered more than maximum capacity. Routes that were originally planned around the 777X were reassigned. Network planners adjusted expectations. And over time, the absence of Boeing's largest widebody stopped feeling temporary. The longer the delay dragged on, the more momentum shifted. Airbus benefited simply by showing up, while Boeing's advantage in the high-capacity segment slowly eroded. Even airlines still committed to the 777X were forced to hedge, reducing their dependence on a program with no firm timeline. The FAA's software approval finally changes the equation, but only partially. It removes a regulatory barrier, not the competitive damage already done. And Boeing knows that reclaiming ground will take more than finishing the 777-9, which is why the company is now pointing to something even bigger. Behind the scenes, Boeing has been quietly signaling what comes after the 777-9. It's called the 777-10, and on paper, it would be the largest twin-engine passenger jet ever built. A stretched version of the 777X, designed to carry even more passengers on long-haul routes where demand simply doesn't slow down. Boeing's idea is simple, but risky. As airlines retire four-engine giants like the A380 and the 747, there's still a small group of routes that need massive capacity. Boeing believes two ultra-powerful engines can now do what once required four. The 777-10 would rely on the same GE-9. X engines being developed for the 777-9, each producing more than 100,000 pounds of thrust. Combined with the new composite wing, the largest Boeing has ever built. The aircraft is meant to deliver lower fuel burn per seat, while keeping airport compatibility through folding wingtips. But this isn't a near-term solution. Boeing has made it clear that the 777-10 can't move forward until the 777-9 is fully certified. No shortcuts, no parallel approval. The entire concept depends on proving that the base aircraft can finally make it into service. And that means the future of Boeing's biggest aircraft is still tied to a program that hasn't crossed the finish line yet. Meanwhile, airlines are finding ways to grow without waiting for either of them. While Boeing focuses on getting bigger aircraft back on track, something else is happening at the other end of the market. Airlines are opening long haul routes that Boeing simply can't serve right now. Routes once thought impossible for single-aisle aircraft are suddenly viable, and carriers are moving fast to take advantage of it. American Airlines made that reality clear when it welcomed its first Airbus A321XLR. With a range of around 4,700 nautical miles, the aircraft can fly non-stop from the U.S. East Coast deep into Western Europe routes that previously required much larger jets. This isn't just about one airplane. The A321 XLR 
allows airlines to connect secondary cities directly, bypassing major hubs and reducing risk. For carriers, it's flexibility without the financial weight of a wide body. And right now, Boeing has no equivalent aircraft ready. That absence matters. Every new route launched with the XLR is a route Boeing isn't competing for. Every fleet decision reinforces Airbus's position in a segment Boeing once dominated. And as these aircraft enter service, the shift becomes harder to undo. If you're enjoying deep dives like this into what's really happening behind the scenes in aviation, make sure you're subscribed to Aviation Insights. This channel breaks down the decisions, delays, and power shifts shaping the future of flight without the noise or hype. New videos are coming, and you won't want to miss what's next.